Hello, in this video we're going to look at a derivative of a quadratic form with respect to a vector. And we're really doing these videos leading up to uh, finding the maximum likelihood estimates for a multinomial normal, multinomial distribution. And uh, this is just one more step. So let's let's jump right in. And for a lot of, if you want more details in the notation that I'm using in this video and why uh, the derivative of a scalar with respect to a column vector is a row vector, you really need to see my previous video on a derivative of a determinant with respect to a matrix. So for this video, we're going to, you know, we're going to go through a couple of points and then an example. So on number one, let's let A be a column vector and mu be a column vector of, of length n. And we want to take the partial derivative of, of a prime mu with respect to mu. And, and this is a number, so if we take the transpose of it, it's still the same. So the numerator here is equal to this, and I do that just to show you that either way we get the same answer. And then when you take this uh, uh, matrix vector product, you get the sum of uh, ai mu i, so each component. And this is still with respect to the vector mu. Then, um, so the first component is the derivative of this sum with respect to mu one. Uh, the and the you know in the second components with respect to mu two, and the nth component is this sum with respect to mu n. And so since only one of these becomes a you know mu one, the others with respect to mu1 are constants and the derivative or the partial is zero. This becomes a1 and then a2 and then this one is a n. Well note that this is a row vector. We started out with a column vector. So the answer is a prime. And this means a transpose. So you take this column vector and make it a row. And so that's the derivative of this here. So next let's take uh, this we're going to take the partial of mu prime a mu with respect to the vector mu so where a is an n by n matrix and each element is can be represented by a i j so now i want to multiply this out a bit so um, this first part so the partial with respect to mu just rewrite and this mu vector i'm just going to write over here so this one says take this vector times the first column, and then that's the first component. Take this vector, you know, it's now a row vector because of the prime, times the second column, and that's the second entry. Take the mu prime with uh, multiplied by the nth column, and that's what this is. So this is a 1 by n matrix, and this is an n by 1 matrix. So next we're going to multiply these through and we get this. So it's a double sum of aij mu i mu j. Now many of you can go straight to here and, and, and get it but I'm just not skipping steps this video. So now we want to take this sum with respect to this vector. So um, it's a column vector so the result since this is a scalar and then we're taking it with respect to a column vector, the answer is going to be a row vector. So I'm going to write it as a column vector, but prime, which means it's a row vector. So now here with, uh, so we have to take this with respect to mu one first. Okay. So when I is one and J is one, we have mu one squared. And so the derivative of that is two times aij mu i, mu one I mean. And actually that's what this first piece is here. Okay. So now the second piece is since we're taking it with respect to mu one, and we've done we have just done the a the i one j one piece. Now let's start them all at, at two. And so um well, not all at two, just not when they're both equal to one. So let's let i equal one and then j equal two. Then that becomes uh, aij, you know, mu two. And then when it's three, then 
So it ends up being this sum right here for when um, i equals 1. Then we're going to sum it from j equals 2 to n and get this product. Now when i is 2 and um, then, then you know, and, and uh, j is 1, then it's here, but all the rest are 0. So we can kind of think of this as like, let's let j equal 1, and then this i go from 2 to n. And then that those derivatives become this. Um, yeah, so we'll, and then we do that, then we do it for mu 2 and mu 3. And so notice that the when they're, I is, we're taking it with respect to 1, so when they're both 1, we get this little 2 out front. And then the rest are summed, but when J is not 1 and I is not 1. So if we look at the kth um, mu K with respect to mu K, then when both I and J are K, then we get this piece out here. And then, um, so then we set I equal to K, and then we go through all these possibilities, except for K. We get this piece here, and then we let... Um, J be K, and then we go through all those possibles, and we get this. And then we do that for the uh, nth, mu n, and we get this same thing. Now this next step, some of you would kind of skip this step and go right to the next step. But when I was originally doing it, I didn't. And so I thought I'd be helpful to show. So here, there's two of these A1 mu1s. So if we take one of those, we can put it in here, and we take the other one and we can put it in here. And then the sums go from one to n. And we can do that for each of those. Put one of those in here and one of those in here, then the sum goes from one to n on each of those. So this, um, remember it's a prime, so it's a column prime, which means it's a row vector. So this becomes this. It's the, this is the first component, the second, third, and this is the nth component. But really, we're just adding two vectors. So we, if we take out the first one on each of these and put them in their own um, row vector, we get this. And then the second piece will make it its own row vector, and we get this. Well, this is, uh, let's look at this one first. So this is taking, um, oh, that should be a mu. Um, not not a AIJ. So we're taking each component of mu i and multiplying it by the first column, you know, the respective row. And we're doing that for each of those. So this piece ends up being this vector times a. So right, we get this uh, component times the first column. That's what this is. And then the second and the third and the fourth and the nth column is this one. Now here, it's a little bit different because it's not the column, it's the, the, I, it's the first row that we're taking it by. And then this is the nth row. So if we take the transpose, which takes the first row and makes it a column, and then we take this uh, multiplication, we get, we get the right thing. So this, is, this can be written back in matrix form like this. Well, we can factor out a mu prime on each of those, and we get this, and that's the answer. So this is the derivative of a quadratic form with respect to a vector. Now, if A, and a, if a is symmetric, then we can uh, write this, then it's just 2A, and the 2 comes out front, and we get this. Now, and as a quick example, um, Let's let's take the partial of this quadratic form with respect to mu. Now remember, this of course this example is leading right up into the multivariate normal distribution, um, but that'll be uh, the next video. So here, what we do is we multiply this out. So we take mu times uh, sigma times x. That's what this is. Don't forget the prime. And then we take x sigma inverse mu, that's this, and then we get this one and this one. Now, one thing to note is that this is 1 by n, n by n, n by 1. So this piece is 1 by 1. It's, it's a scalar. 
and this one is two. So if we take the transpose of those, it's still one by one. So let's take the transpose of this, and then we get x transpose sigma inverse mu. And then we can combine those into two of those. And that's how we go from here to here. Now when we take the partial with respect to mu, there's no mu in here, so it's zero. And then this is this is like a vector. So it's a uh, one by n, n by one, and so this is a, a vector. It's like a in example one. So when we take the partial, we just we just get what's in out front. Now you think you might think, well, wait, where's the transpose? Remember, this is already transposed. So if we want to write it in transpose notation, so put parentheses around it and put sigma inverse x, you know, times 2 and then transpose, then then the then the a is is sigma inverse x and then when you when the ends up being the when you transpose it you get this. So this may take a little bit of thinking about, but you get it. And then this is the uh, number two that we did, we get this result. Well, um, there's a sigma inverse common in both of those, so we factor it out. Oh, and this also assumes that sigma is symmetric um, from here to here, which we're going to assume in the multivariate normal distribution. Um, and uh, I forgot to take the transpose out when I did it the first time, so then I take it out the second time, and that's the answer. Well, that's all I have for today. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.